it's time to start mixing the first color for this uh, first screen back right here. <clears throat> what I've got in mind is a, uh, a light blue, very light blue. The lightest color, of course, will be the white of the paper. The next color, the next value is going to be a light blue because a large portion of the uh, that screen is in the sky area. So what I'm going to do is uh, mix up in this uh, cup right here, and I'll start out with uh, some of this uh, blue. This is uh, it's called uh, Ultra Blue by Speedball, and I will uh, I'll take a little bit of this and I'll put it in here. Not too much, and then I will uh, take uh, the white. Uh, this uh, appropriately is called white speedball. There it is. Consistent, uh, same, same kind of color. So I pour in a lot of white in here. Pour in uh, quite a bit, quite a bit of white. And, uh, and I proceed to mix it up. Dum -de -dum 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 -dum. Now, the screen, I don't know if you can see back here, but the screen has a large portion of the screen that is open. So there's going to, when I, when I squeegee across that screen with the ink. It's putting more ink into the screen to print onto the paper. So, and I know from doing this before that it takes a certain amount of ink to print 20 prints like that with that color on it. Now this color uh, is going to be, uh, it can be uh, partially transparent. So what I've done is I've taken some of this uh, medium it's an acrylic extender base and it adds some transparency to the color because this uh, this first color that I've got doesn't have to be opaque. It's the first color on the paper and it can be transparent and it's going to be a light blue anyway. So to get, to, to get volume, enough ink, I've added some of this uh, acrylic extender base to it and uh, that gives me just about a half a cup here this thing and uh, hopefully that will be enough uh, we'll see uh, now uh, I think I might it's a little blue so I think I might add just a, just a tad of the green see the green put just a just maybe a, a drop of green yeah, there we go. And so it's not it's not as uh, brilliantly blue. And uh, I may need some more white. Some more white in. And, and the green. Now it's uh, it's uh, it's pretty blue. I want it a little bit duller. So uh, opposite of uh, blue is orange. Now where is my really have an orange but I do have this uh, brown color which is called brown and it has a lot of uh, orange in it being brown so I add just a smidgen of that not very much mix it up I may need to add some more white later there we go. It's just kind of dulled it to, uh, it's not gray, but it's just not as bright a blue, which is what I want. And it's uh, plenty bright, I mean, plenty light, the value of it. And, uh, so, I will uh, probably use that uh, for my first color screen.
All right, I've got uh, I've got a uh, a good bit of uh, my first color here, which is a, a light blue, and uh, I uh, I'm pretty happy with this value. It's a very light pale blue, but uh, I. Uh, A little bit more blue. Maybe a little bit more blue to it. And uh, blend that in. It'll increase the intensity of it slightly, uh, giving a, a less gray color, more of a light blue color. I have gone, I've gone to, uh, I put the, uh, added blue to it, I added, put quite a bit of white, and I put some of this green to give it kind of a aqua color, and then I added just a little bit of this warm brown to it to make it, tone it down so it wasn't so blue, which brown is not really orange, but it has a lot of orange in it, which, would, uh, which is why it made it less intense blue. I kind of like the way it looks. Uh, I won't know until I uh, take a smudge of it, smudge it on the paper, and see how it looks. Uh, and then that's the uh, that's pretty much the first color. Hopefully, I've got enough here in this cup that will uh, take me through uh, 20 prints. Uh, perhaps I should mix a little more. But, uh, do that just before I print. Well, it's time to uh, set up for printing. I uh, I don't uh, I don't keep it uh, like print ready all the time. I've got to set up all the little uh, different things about it. And uh, I keep forgetting to mention on these videos that uh, it would help me a lot uh, if you would, uh, right down there at the bottom, there's a subscribe button. If you would hit that subscribe button, just hit the button and then forget about it. Uh, I get a certain, I get to a certain level of subscribers and there's a benefit for it on YouTube. So, please subscribe, as everybody else says, and uh, hit that little red button. I'm going to get move this table out of the way because it's my exposure table. I'll move it back over there out of the way. This is my printing table. Printing table. My first screen is already in the uh, printing press here. And I have to uh, put me on the spacer. Put me on the spacer underneath it bottom edge here so that when I put it down, there's, there's a space, there's a space between, if that works, it's pretty tight, it's, the screen is pretty tight, so I'm going to have to press down real hard to get to go through it. So we'll see, it's not, not as loose as my normal wooden frames. So, uh, Let's uh, clean this off a little bit. So, uh, this comes off here. And, uh, paper. Here's my, here's my papers. Should be 20. 20 sheets here. I've already got them cut to size. Better. Better size. I've got my uh, 
I got my first color here. And, uh, uh, I may have to mix a little more. Ooh, that's a nice Take that off. It's been, it's been sitting here. It's been sitting here for weeks, and weeks. And it's just like accumulated dust. I need to wash that. Uh, I got all my uh, <coughs> clothespins are hanging in the rinse. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve. Plenty of close prints there. Thank you, Prince. Plenty of prints. And, uh, that's why, that's why I use this table to set up my, my vacuum for, uh, holding the paper down put on the table when I'm printing. Vacuum sucks that paper down and holds it while I'm printing, so I lift the screen and lift the paper up there. So, that's why I use this table. I'm going to uh, set this up here. There's a hole. I'm going to plug it here. Sucks that up. And then I'll plug in my plug in the vacuum here. And then I'll plug this in. I'll plug this into the wall. And when I pick my switch, nothing happens. Get it turned on. You like that? Bob Trump. Well, sadly, I have come to the conclusion that uh, this project has to be abandoned as, it's, as it is for now. What's happened is that this, this uh, metal uh, screen print frame is the first time I've ever used these. I bought them from a shop in Atlanta which specifically deals with t-shirt printing. And this kind of uh, frame is 
is made for t-shirt printing. It's exceptionally tight. It is tighter than I could ever stretch it by hand. It's so tight that it's hard to push it down onto the surface that you're printing on. And it has to be pushed down with the squeegee. And the squeegee run across it at that pressure in order to do the print properly. And I'm not capable of doing that on this tight of screen with this large an image. So I've chosen a screen that's too small for this image to try to uh, accomplish what I want to accomplish. So what I have to do is uh, reclaim these screens, clean out the image, get them, get them all cleaned out, and I can use them later for a uh, t-shirt project or something. And then I have to build me uh, screens that are bigger, bigger screens out of wood, and stretch them myself. They won't be near this tight, and the image, by being a larger frame, this image will be farther away from the edge. Being this close to the edge, it, it, it's almost impossible for me to press it down with my fingers with all my strength. With a squeegee trying to press it down evenly all across the whole surface, it's impossible for me to do that. Uh, I've, I've pretty much wasted seven or eight pieces of paper trying to get it right, and just on this color. And the reason it worked on my other one was because my frames were frames that I built myself and they weren't near this tight and I was able to do it. But now I know if I build me larger frames, stretch it the way I normally do, and use those for this type of a print on paper. And then save, save these frames for a t-shirt project where the image is smaller. That's it. Say la vie.